Uh, well, hey everyone, I'm Ben Wagner. I'm here with Mark Covert, one of the premier runners uh, in the country over the past 43 years. 44 years, <laughs> there we go. Uh, this man's run more days in his life than, than he has. It's just, he's just got an incredible streak going. We're here to talk about uh, the sport of running. Sure. Um, you know, I ran when I was in high school and college both, and uh, you know, had relatively good success when I was in school. Uh, the one thing, uh, and why you guys are talking to me today, is the fact that uh, uh, my running streak started uh, without missing a day. Uh, uh, July 23rd, 1968 was the last day I, I, I missed a day. I went to where uh, you know, I was a pretty competitive runner on the national level. Uh, not a star by any means, but uh, you know, a good runner. Uh, to where now, uh, when I run, all the trees move by real slow. I can tell you how many leaves are on the trees because they don't pass real fast. But uh, I make sure I get my shoes on every day and get out still every day for about 50 or 60 minutes. And it's something that uh, you know I really enjoy doing. It's something I think it's uh, really important to do all, all the time. I understand that you've been uh, keeping a log of all these runs since you started with street. Yeah, I have a log book. I have a workout I uh, run since I was a sophomore in high school in 1965. Uh, I think Lyndon Johnson was president then. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, uh, it tells the story, you know, it tells the reason why I was able to do the things I accomplished when I was in college as an athlete. And uh, it tells some other stories, uh, you know, uh, what, uh, how, uh, the amount of miles I was running uh, the day after I had uh, meniscus surgery, arthroscopic surgery, uh, uh, when I've been sick and things like that. And it's, uh, it, it's a story in itself. Apart from those two, are there any runs you block that really stick out? Well, I, the longest run always sticks out in my mind, uh, and this was the summer after I graduated from high school, me and uh, four buddies of mine thought it would be a brilliant idea to run 52 miles a double marathon. It wasn't so brilliant, but we did it. Uh, about seven hours and 35 minutes, and uh, it was uh, uh, something, in fact, one of the guys that did it with me, I just talked to him on the phone the other day, he lives in Thailand now, and uh, that's one of the things we laughed about, how stupid we were to do something like that. But uh, because I don't think any of us had ever won much more than about 18 miles at any one time. Uh, That's so, a big uh, jump. yeah, you know, uh, just about triple. <laughs> but that run sticks out. And then uh, uh, there's been days where I've been hurt or sick. You know, uh, the day after my meniscus surgery, that was a tough day. And, you know, when you have the flu and things like that, those are tough days. I, I've always looked forward to putting my shoes on. And on, on those kinds of days, it's, I look at it as, this is a challenge now, you know, can I do this, you know. On the days when it's just a, another day, you know, I, I look forward to, to doing it, you know, but uh, the days when it's difficult, I look at those as challenges, and to this point, I've been able to meet those challenges. So one of the big things with our, our path is encouraging community, you know, when you talk about, based on, you know, 50,000 some runs, running in solitude versus running with friends, what do you think the balance is there? Um, what are the perks of both sides? You know, it's uh, it's great stuff to be able to have a group to train with, uh, you know, to be able to meet some people and go out for a run, uh, whether there's a whole lot of conversation on or not. So can you speak a little bit about, you know, the transition of being an athlete, being a runner, and then moving into coaching? How has that changed your perspective? I've coached just about as long as the streak is. You know, uh, I started coaching in 1974, so the streak was only six years old. You know, I was still running, running at that time. For my kids, I can't ask them to do what I've done. You know, tell some tell somebody who's hurt not to miss a day or sick not to miss days and things like that. You know, but uh, I, I do try to stress to them that it's important that uh, we train and there's a commitment and that it's an important thing for them to do. You know, and, and, and for my runners, you know, I, I have to really stress to them that this is a, uh, this isn't something they're doing. This is a lifestyle. You know, uh, it's something that if they're going to be successful with it, they have to commit to it and realize that this is something they have to do all the time. You know, and uh, when they're done running, you know, uh, I tell them, you know, when you're done running, you may step away from this for a while, but hopefully you enjoy this enough that as you get older, this will be something that you come back to because you can remember the good times and what it felt like when you were running and, and, and how enjoyable it was. So, well, there's a lot of different things that go on there with kids on my team. So, just looking um, at running apart from the actual workout, how has that positively affected your life and the life of others around you? Or maybe some you have to Well, for me personally, you know, uh, it's affected just about my entire life. Uh, you know, uh, my wife, uh, I 
met my wife in a uh, running class I was teaching. So if I wouldn't run, I wouldn't have met her. Uh, you know, uh, just about every job other than one or two uh, has been uh, based on running somehow. So uh, personally and uh, professionally, you know, it's been a huge part of my life. Uh, uh, for the kids, and for me also, of course, all of my kids, for me, it enabled me to go to college. Uh, I got a scholarship and I was able to go to school. That was tremendously important for my parents because I was the first one in my family to go to college. And then uh, for the kids on my team, you know, it uh, opens up a, a little different world for them. You know, uh, they get to meet kids from different places, uh, they travel around a little bit, they go to different places to meet. And then for a number of the kids, that's, the, that's their ticket just like mine was to school. It's an opportunity then for them to get a scholarship and move on to school, and, uh, and that may be their only way to go to school. So. That's just such an amazing story about the power of running. How's it affected you in your life? I think the first thing before you even start, you have to say, this is something that I, I want to do. Not that you have to do, that you want to do. And uh, also, since you want to do it, make it important to yourself so you find the time in your day and carve that time out and go out and do something. You know, And it doesn't have to be anything tremendous. It might be a, a walk around the block for the first time. Uh, uh, but then three weeks from now, you might walk around that block twice. You know, And uh, it's just a matter of uh, putting the time in and expanding that time. And over a period of time, you'll get in better shape, be able to do more. It'll be more and more enjoyable. And it'll become part of your life that you'll never want to let go again. That's awesome. That's what it's all about. Thank you so much for taking the time. I'm happy that I can do it.